Tina Turner's widower Erwin Bach is reportedly planning to transform the $76 million Swiss estate where she passed into a museum dedicated to her life and work. Tina, who passed away at the age of 83 on May 24th after battling illnesses for years, lived with her husband Erwin at this sprawling retreat overlooking the shores of Lake Zurich for years. Now there's word that Erwin has plans to turn either their estate, dubbed Chateau Algonquin, or the other massive property they bought into a place place used to showcase memorabilia from the superstar's career, but nothing has been confirmed just yet. After decades of personal tragedy and pain, Tina Turner's final years were full of happiness and a peaceful life in Switzerland, a lot thanks to her loving husband and partner of many years, German music producer Erwin Bach. Tina was able to find joy again with him and in Europe with their beautiful home as a sanctuary. Long before her recent passing, Tina Turner became a citizen of Switzerland in 2013 and renounced her US citizenship after marrying her longtime partner, German-born Erwin Bach, who she was in a relationship with since 1986. When speaking about why she relocated to Europe back in 1997, Tina said, I've left America because my success was in another country and my boyfriend was in another country. Tina reportedly fell in love with her husband, Erwin Bach, when he delivered her a new Mercedes as a present from her manager. The late singer first met him in 1985, seven years after she finalized her divorce from her abusive first husband, Ike Turner. She spoke in her memoir, My Love Story, about Erwin delivering an expensive thank you present on behalf of her manager, Roger Davies. That particular week in 1985, the next date on my tour was in Cologne, Germany. As my manager Roger and I flew into the city, I was tired and a little down, thinking of the grueling schedule ahead. We were walking through the airport when a young man stepped out from behind a column to greet us. I thought he might be a fan, but Roger greeted him warmly. Erwin Bach, an executive from EMI, my record company in Europe, had turned up to deliver a surprise gift to me from Roger. A new Mercedes G, the hard to get G wagon. Tina added about how she fell for Erwin right away, but the real surprise was in the car it was the man. My heart suddenly started to beat, boom, 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 drowning out all other sound. My hands were ice cold, so this is what they call love at first sight, I thought. Oh my God, I am not ready for this. But Tina said as Erwin gave her a ride to her hotel in the Mercedes to explain its features, she was suddenly insecure. She added, I felt very insecure about my looks. I was wearing an Issey Miyake sweater with leather jeans, rock and roll stuff, and my hair was big, big, big in those days. But if you ask me, I didn't look so good and I doubt that Erwin found me attractive. Oh, and if the hair wasn't enough of a turnoff, I was 46, divorced, and the mother of two sons and two stepsons were now practically men themselves. Tina said that she later found out that Erwin had the same electrical charges her and the pair finally married in 2013. That same year, Erwin nursed her through a debilitating stroke and four years later, he donated one of his kidneys to Tina to save her life. While she ultimately passed on May 24th, 2023, the kidney transplant added time to her life as she had years of battles with kidney problems long before. Despite her passing after decades of personal tragedy, Tina had final years full of happiness and a peaceful life in Switzerland. Steven Sills, a designer and long time friend of Tina explained she was ready for what lay ahead, confiding in him and saying she wasn't scared of death as she had a wonderful last part of her life. Much of that happiness was thanks to Erwin. A source close to them in the music industry said about Erwin and Tina, in her final year, she was happy and secure in her relationship. She had found true love and was able to live without fear. She had a group of friends in Switzerland and truly loved the people she was around. Tina Turner passed away in her home she shared with Erwin, which was a space that had long been a refuge for her. She left behind a life in the spotlight in the US for a quieter life, living in the town of Kusnot, Switzerland, on the shores of Lake Zurich. The couple moved into the home known as Chateau Algonquin in 1998. And while moving across the globe would have been a big change for Tina, Erwin is German and would always help Tina as a translator, considering it's one of the main dialects in this area of Switzerland. The pair rented the massive estate for a handful of years due to Swiss restrictions on four foreigners buying property in the country. After Tina became a Swiss citizen in 2013, it said she purchased it for a reported 76 million. This lavish home is where Erwin and Tina got married as well. A local newspaper described Chateau Algonquin in a 2020 feature, explaining that the property is located directly on Lake Zurich and covers an impressive 59,427 square feet. In addition to the four-story main building, there's a two-story boathouse and 
and a sprawling garden. Apparently, ownership of the mansion changed hands in 2020, according to the Land Registry Office in Kusnak. This confirmed its sale to Inez Kindy Venice, the head of a family-owned wood processing company in Lucerne, Switzerland. Sources told the outlet the purchase price was in the mid-double-digit million range. However, under the terms of the sale, Urban and Tina were allowed to stay living at the home as renters, while another previous owner of the abode, photographer Casper Fleischmann, reportedly still lives in the boathouse. Since the news of her death, fans have been gathering at the gates of the property, which are flanked by two large illuminated columns and bear the inscription Algonquin in gold letters. Those who have made the voyage left flowers, notes, and candles in tribute to the icon. Either way, Erwin and Tina had years and years of happy memories at their stunning Swiss home. In 2019, New York Times journalist Amanda Hess went inside the luxurious home and described it as a cartoon palace. She said about the couple's fairy tale residence, ivy snaking up the walls, gardeners manicuring the shrubs, a life-size two-legged horse sculpture suspended from a domed ceiling, a framed rendering of Turner as an Egyptian queen, a room stuffed with gilded Louis XIV style sofas, and sprawled on one of them, Tina Turner herself. While the couple was happily living in Chateau Algonquin, it was reported that in fall 2021, Irwin and Tina invested in a property of their own. This property is a 10 building waterfront estate overlooking Lake Zurich as well, also in the same area of Switzerland. And it's even said that tennis star Roger Federer considered buying the property at one point, but I guess Tina had beat him to it. Erwin had hinted that he and Tina used the new compound, which spans over 240,000 square feet of space, as a weekend retreat close to where their main residence is located. We feel very comfortable in Switzerland, Erwin had shared with a local outlet, emphasizing their desire to use the new estate as a luxurious weekend retreat in the immediate vicinity. This magnificent property boasts an impressive array of amenities. With its 10 distinct structures, including a private pond, stream, swimming pool, and boat deck, the estate embodies the epitome of luxury and leisure. The property is a century-old historic estate, with the structures spread over 5.5 acres of land with plenty of private lakefront access. It's no doubt that this was Tina's type of place, as outdoor space has always been a priority for her. Back in 2000, she told Architectural Digest, I need nature and solitude, they nurture me. My idea of a vacation is reading a book on the terrace while my boyfriend cooks his dinner. The mansion purchase came quite recently, only a month before Tina agreed to sell her vast music catalog to German music company BMG for $50 million. To which Tina said, the protection of my life's work, my musical inheritance is something personal. I'm confident that with BMG and Warner Music, my work is in professional and reliable hands. Erwin and Tina dated for 27 years and were married for 10 years until her passing from a long illness. Over the course of their decades-long relationship, the couple shared plenty of loving moments and milestones together. Tina also credited Erwin for teaching her how to love without giving up who I am. In 2017, Erwin gave his wife the ultimate gift when he donated one of his kidneys. At the time, Tina needed a life-saving transplant after suffering kidney failure. She said in her memoir, I am happy to say that my beloved husband, Erwin, giving me one of his kidneys the gift of life. I'm in good health and loving life every day. And while it wasn't always perfect, Tina looked forward to experiencing life with Erwin by her side. And clearly, the pair did that for many years, living life at their beautiful Swiss estate. Now that we've looked at the homes where Erwin Bach has lived out his happy years with his late wife, Tina Turner, that will bring today's house tour to a close. But before we go, answer this question for me. If you were a widower to a musical legend, would you turn your home into a museum or just stay cozy living there? Let me know your plans in the comments below and don't forget to like, subscribe, and follow me on Instagram to chat. I'm Kara the Vampire Slayer, and if you'd like to check out another tour before you go, then definitely stay tuned because next we're gonna look at the homes of Diana Ross. Bye. Every time I feel how life goes.
Diana Ross has been in showbiz for six decades, if you can believe it, and the 78 year old is still producing songs and performing for audiences across the globe. Not only that, but she's still building up her real estate portfolio. Just last month, it was revealed that Diana purchased a chic new home in Miami Beach for over $15 million, which is located right on the water in an exclusive location. The modern mansion offers nearly 6,000 square feet of space, as well as five bedrooms and luxury amenities galore. Aside from this new crib, the legendary Miss Ross had long lived in Connecticut at her sprawling estate dubbed Quarry Farm, which dates back to the 1930s, as well as owning a couple of properties in Los Angeles. Also, Michael and I have dropped our own house tour of our new home that we moved into this year, so go ahead and subscribe to our personal channel if you want to see where we're living and more of what we're up to. In these videos, we don't reveal any addresses, and even though I've done a house tour of my own place, please do not show up at any private residences because it's not safe for anyone. Diana Ross has been in the music industry for decades, and despite this, she hasn't retired. Last year, she even released her 25th album, as well as released a feel-good single, Turn Up the Sunshine, earlier this year. I mean, she even had an international tour this year that ended with half a dozen shows in Vegas, rocking her usual glam style on stage. Miss Ross can also celebrate her accomplishments and take a break from her busy schedule in her new Miami Beach house, which she reportedly purchased for $15.5 million in October 2022. The Contemporary Mansion is located in Miami, right on the water, more specifically in the exclusive area of the Venetian Islands, a chain of artificial islands linked together by a causeway in Biscayne Bay. Built in 2017, Diana's new home sits on a quarter of an acre of land, while inside offers up just over 5,800 square feet of space across two levels. In typical Miami style, the home is full of modern details like bright white walls, open spaces, as well as walls of glass to let in the sunshine, and there's also five bedrooms and five bathrooms. Once entering Diana's new crib, you'll find a massive open plan common area with soaring ceilings, more than one living area, dining area, and more. This great room also has shiny white terrazzo floors underfoot, which extend throughout most of the modern home as well. Glass sliders on one side of this space open right up to a terrace and an infinity edge pool, and the sleek kitchen is situated on the other end of the room. The cooking space is also open plan in style and boasts top of the line appliances fit for a professional chef, as well as other bonuses like a snack bar area and mini wine fridge. Other perks Diana can enjoy at her new Miami getaway include state-of-the-art smart home tech throughout the residence, and plenty of walls of glass which open to reveal the outdoor entertainment areas for easy indoor-outdoor Florida living. Each of the bedrooms in the abode offer up a private ensuite bath, and the singer's master bedroom has its very own wall of glass that opens to the private balcony where you can catch amazing views of the ocean. Of course, the spa style bath is also equally luxurious, and there's even a walk in closet as big as a small apartment. On an upper level, there's a glass walled pavilion which can be used as an office or studio room, and this opens up to a breathtaking rooftop terrace. Here, there are 360 degree views across the Bay of Miami skyline and plenty of deck space to catch some rays. The lower patio area which surrounds Diana's new home has a ton of lounging and entertaining space, along with that stunning pool, while well, there's also a private dock and 60 feet of bay frontage. Well, aside from this new property, Diana has long lived in a sprawling Connecticut estate that's known as Quarry Farm. The stately home dates back to the 1930s, and property records show that Miss Ross owns the estate in two pieces, consisting of a nearly five acre parcel of land and another which is 4.05 acres. Located in the elite neighborhood of Bellhaven in Greenwich, Connecticut, Diana bought the mega mansion way back in 1980 off of actor Frank Gorshin. While we haven't been able to see the inside of her home, older photos give us an idea about the style, and we do have some details about it from real estate records. 
Features of Quarry Farm include over 12,500 square feet of space along with 11 bedrooms, 10 bathrooms, and 5 fireplaces throughout. Designed by architect Frank Forster, the mansion is set to contain a spiral staircase leading all the way from the basement to the third floor, as well as classic details like 18th century oak paneling in some of the rooms, including the living room, and beautiful arches leading from one space to the other. Also inside, there are spaces like a family room, wine cellar, master bedroom with double-sided fireplace, and even a bowling alley if that's not enough. While the massive interior offers plenty of perks, the grounds of Diana's home pack in even more amenities. Out in the yard, you'll find a freeform swimming pool, a spa, a tennis court, a five-car garage, a guest cottage, and an additional garage with apartment above it. In more recent years, it said Miss Ross had tried to sell her longtime estate, asking a whopping $39 million plus. However, around this time, the town actually valued her property at about $14.4 million. And once the house was assessed for much less than Diana had hoped, she took it off the market and rented it out instead. Besides her Connecticut estate, Diana's real estate portfolio also reportedly includes a couple of places in Los Angeles. One of these is said to be a well-sized three-level home just above LA Sunset Strip, and the other more modest property is situated across town in Venice. While we don't have much to go by, if anything, for her Venice property, we do know Diana's abode in LA, the other one, has served as a part-time residence over the years. And she purchased this one back in 1996 for $725,000 according to records. Located just above the Sunset Strip on a winding road, her Hollywood home is said to span over 6,400 square feet of space, with five bedrooms and seven bathrooms throughout. The only photos to go by of Diana's LA property are outdated, but we can get an idea of the layout and the features still. We can see the house had an open plan main area with dark hardwood flooring underfoot and sitting rooms with windows overlooking the hills, while the kitchen had marble or granite floors in an off-white color, as well as some very 90s looking cherrywood cabinets and stainless steel appliances. The home also has a movie theater which appears to be cozily tucked away on a lower level, while the amenities continue outside. Here we can see there's a zen garden, a full tennis court, and a massive patio with areas to dine al fresco. Not to mention, the terrace area includes a stunning swimming pool and built-in hot tub. While that might be all we've got on Diana Ross's Los Angeles home, we've learned that she still owns a handful of stunning properties, and we got a good look at the latest one that she's purchased. That being said, we're going to bring this house tour to a close. Thanks so much for watching, and before you head out, think about this. If you were still working in your showbiz career well into your golden years, would you maintain a few different homes to stay at like Diana, or choose one favorite property to live at for the rest of your life? Be sure to let me know your thoughts down in the comments below. Otherwise, like, subscribe, and turn on those notifications. My name is Kara the Vampire Slayer. Follow me on Instagram to chat more, and I'll see you all in another video. Bye.